Praise God, my brothers and sisters. I am so blessed to be here with you today. I pray that God is moving through this conference awakening time. I thank Brother Collins Olo for asking me to be a part. I am so honored. I am so thankful for Grace Center Church, a church where God's vision is real. I hope and pray that the word that you hear today will help encourage you to become a stronger Christian and bolder in your faith than you have ever been in your life because I believe God is asking for people to awaken, to do what God has called them to do. We're going to start our reading today. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ezekiel chapter 37. And we're going to read a story that some of you may be familiar with, the Valley of the Dry Bones. Ezekiel 37, God is speaking to Ezekiel. Verse 1, the Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere. Imagine that. Imagine being out and looking across a valley and seeing nothing but Bones that had dried in the sun. We've all seen that. These bones were everywhere. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? What a question to ask Ezekiel. And this is Ezekiel's reply. O oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Praise God. Only God knows the answers to the questions that we really need to know. I thank God for that. God replies to him. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones. Listen to the word of God. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. Ezekiel asks, can these be made alive again? God says, yes, I'm going to put life into them. And he asks him to speak a prophetic word. I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscle on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message. Just as he told me, suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. A rattling noise at God's word. God had told Ezekiel to speak these words to the bones. God told Ezekiel that he was going to put life back into them. Can you imagine seeing those bones that you look at shaking, starting to shake and move? Human beings, bones that have been cast across the valley, different pieces here, there, they begin to rattle. The bones begin to rattle and shake. 
The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then, as I watched muscle and flesh formed over the bones, then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Pieces from the skeletons all over began to shake and move, and they came together. Each bone knew where the other bone was, and they, God began to put all of these bones back together, these dried bones, and then all of a sudden, muscle and skin began to form over all of these bodies. but they still had no breath in them. True life, the life that gives us breath, the life that gave us breath from the very beginning comes from God. The life that can give you breath right now in the life that you're living, if you feel you're living a life that is without God, without hope, God can breathe life into your body. If you've been in church for a long time, but the last couple years with everything that's gone on, you feel run down. You feel weak. He can breathe new life into you. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds. Son of man, speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds, breathe into the dead bodies so they may live again. God is raising an army right now. In Ezekiel chapter 37, we see where these dried bones are. What is the significance here? What is he trying to show Ezekiel? So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. All of a sudden, this valley of dry bones that has now become bodies, breath had come into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet as a great army. What God was trying to show Ezekiel here, this was toward his children, the chosen people of Israel. But I feel it is just as important today as it was then. We have a world. We have churches that are full of dry bones. And today is the day that you receive the breath of God. You will be awakened. He is awakening an army, but not an army in the sense that the world sees. He's awakening an army for him. He's awakening an army to do his work. I want you to look around you right now. I want you to look around and I want you to see the brothers and sisters that are all there with you. Your pastor, Brother Collins, the worship team, I want you to see everybody that's there. It is time for all of us to take a deep breath of the Holy Spirit and let the fire that is inside of us explode out into the world. There is a world that is dying without hope. I am here to tell you that you are that army. You 
are what God is calling. You are what he is breathing life into today during this conference so that you can bring the good news. You say, Brother Tony, what do we? What is this army going to do? An army fights. We are going to fight, but we are going to fight the enemy. And we are going to fight in ways that the world doesn't fight. We are going to use weapons that the world doesn't have. I ask you today, stand up, become that warrior for God that he's called you to be. Let those dry bones become a new body in Christ. Christ will teach us the weapons that we are to possess and use. The most beautiful thing about this whole process, the whole concept of being in his army, is the battle's already won. It was won by Jesus Christ long ago on the cross. We do not have to fear the valley of the shadow of death. God is with us. What are we going to use how are we going to fight? What is God going to instruct us to do? If you have your Bibles, I would like you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll start with verse 3. And this is where we get our instruction for how we are going to fight the spirit that we will use to fight. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down strongholds of human reasoning and destroy false arguments. There are strongholds on people there with you now in your community. There are strongholds of beliefs that deny God, that believe the world, that believe something totally different. We are going to use weapons to bring down those strongholds to get rid of the reasoning, what they think they should hang on to that's not of God. We're going to tear those down as this army of God together, brothers and sisters, praise God, we are going to tear it down. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We want everything to go away that would stop anyone from knowing God. Because if you are here right now and you know God, you know what a wonderful life it is. You know the peace that comes with it. But you also know the power and might of the Holy Spirit that God gave us that still has the power that was in Jesus Christ when he walked this earth. He said, I must go away, but I will send the comforter. And he told us that what we would do would be greater than what he had done. We have that power. We need to realize that and possess it. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. 
When you truly love God, you will want to obey Christ because in his will, we find joy, we find strength, we find happiness, but more importantly, we find eternal life. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. This verse, I want you to understand, this verse is asking God's army to go out, outside of Grace Center Church, outside into your community, and go after the people who do not understand Jesus Christ. Many have never heard his name. There are people right now who are counting on you to tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. Here Paul tells us that we don't use weapons of this world. We are an army for God. We are brothers and sisters, warriors for God to fight the enemy. Who's the enemy? Who are we fighting, Brother Tony? What are the weapons that you spoke of? If you will turn your Bibles to Ephesians Chapter 6, we are going to look at those weapons that God has given to each of us upon receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. I can't emphasize that enough. If you're here today, somebody's here today who has never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You feel an emptiness, a hopelessness. There are brothers and sisters around you right now who've been praying for you, praying that you would come to know Jesus Christ, to become part of this army for God in this time that he needs us. The world has been through so much with sickness of COVID, with anger and bitterness. God needs us to show the world love. He can do that today for you. He can show you love and mercy. He has an army that he's calling forward that doesn't use weapons of this world. Let's go over the weapons that God has given to us. The full armor of God. This is some of my favorite scripture in the entire Bible because this is what protects you. This is what you use to fight against the devil that has a hold on so many people that are sitting around you right now. Praise God, we have the power because God has given it to us. It's our responsibility to stand up, go out into the world, go out into the community, use these weapons and fight for God. Fight for the people that don't know God. If they die without God, they are lost for eternity. Church, it's time for an awakening. As much as it's time to wake up spiritually for those who've not received Christ, I think right now it is just as important, if not more important, that the church have a revival 
an awakening of spirit so that they will boldly go out into the world and tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. He's giving you an armor that you can stand against the devil and beat him back and protect yourself. Every morning when I wake, I use this scripture to get dressed. I want to walk out of my home knowing I am ready for battle because brothers and sisters, believe me when I tell you there is a battle out in this world every day, a battle for your soul. We have a full set of armor from God. Who are we fighting against? This is very important. Please listen. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. We're not fighting against people. If you, if you have people that when you try to talk to them, get angry. If you have people around you that you are not getting along with. If you're holding bad feelings towards someone, understand it is not that person that we're fighting against. It's the devil, the enemy who has them trapped. We have to overcome that with these weapons. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. And listen to this. This is our weapon. These are our weapons. This is our armor. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of of evil. I have spoke to so many pastors who have said, just as I have said, I have never seen the world so evil. Babies being slaughtered. People over some of the silliest things killing each other. This world has become evil. Just as in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. We have to understand it's time to equip ourselves to fight God's fight. Will you fight with me? Will you stand up with your brothers and sisters that are around you? With Brother Collins and his family. It's time to stand up. Verse number 14. Stand your ground. Putting on the belt of truth. Understand that the belt. The belt is what holds everything together. Without the belt of truth, the truth of God's word, your armor would fall off. This holds it together, the belt of truth. The body of armor of God's righteousness. When you hunger and thirst after God's righteousness to walk in the ways of God, this will be your armor to protect your heart. The devil wants 
to come after your heart. God's righteousness, the body armor with the belt of truth wrapped around will protect you. Put this on every day. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared. I remember when this, when God revealed this scripture to me and he gave me a meaning to it that I had never felt before. Some people, when battle comes, are afraid to run into battle. Run. What God is asking you today is put on shoes that give you peace because of your salvation, because of the good news of what Jesus Christ has done in your life. You will put on those shoes, you'll tie them tight, and you will run into battle you will no longer fear being in that army and fighting God's fight. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith. I want everybody right now, just hold your hand up. This is your shield. Why do you need a shield? To stop the fiery arrows of the devil. The enemy is going to come at you with lies. He is going to use people to come at you. He's going to use many weapons, deceit, lies, fear. You hold this weapon up and you shake your fist at the enemy knowing that you have a shield, a shield of faith, knowing that the one that created the entire world is with you, standing with you in battle. That faith, the name of Jesus, stops the attacks of the devil. This one is so important to me. Put on the salvation as your helmet. The helmet of salvation that you put on. When you get up in the mornings and you dress yourself with this scripture, I want you to tighten that helmet real tight. The one place that the devil really loves to plant fear, doubt, lies, is right here in your mind. That's where it begins. He puts thoughts in your mind. And the longer you think on them, roots from those thoughts grow deep into your heart. It's how he gets past the armor. You have to protect your thoughts. You have to bring your thoughts unto subjection of God. This one, this is the piece of armor all of the other pieces of armor are for defense. We defend ourselves with, we have our shoes on, we have our armor on, we have our shield, but this is the only weapon that is for attacking. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praise God that we have this word, that we have God's word 
to read and to study and to hear, to hear the word, that we may be doers of the word and carry our sword. I don't want anybody to have to carry around a small knife. I want you to be able to pull a sword out when the enemy comes to attack you or your family. And that is the word of God. I cannot tell you how important it is to always be a hearer of the word. Be in God's word. Attend God's church. I want you to, if you haven't been, please make an effort to continue to attend now that you are allowed to uh, gather again in church. Get back into Grace Center Church so that Brother Collins can teach you the Word of God and be a shepherd to you. I finish with verse number 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert. Be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. That is what we pray today. That you will always stay alert. That you will let those dry bones come together. Let there be an awakening today. Let God's army Stand up. Grab your weapons. Get your armor. Be ready to fight. And always be in prayer for each other. If you're here today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, we're going to pray now. And... If you pray this prayer, Romans 10, 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead after three days, you shall be saved. I want to pray that prayer with you. And if you pray that prayer, I want you to let Brother Collins or anybody there with the church know that you've made a decision for Christ today. But I want you to bow your heads with me now. I want everyone to pray. And if you receive Jesus, I want you to believe this prayer and receive Jesus. Please let someone know. Bow your heads. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Jesus, I believe that you died on a cross for me, for my sins. I ask you today, cleanse me of my sins. Jesus, become my Lord and Savior. Thank you for making me an heir to the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you all so much for letting me be here today to join you. I pray for you always, my wife and I, Patty, do. From Broken Warrior Ministries to you in Kenya, in Koseli, at Grace Center Church. We love you. We're praying for you. And may God bless this wonderful awakening time that is happening today. Praise God.